We are up and doing. Sometimes we are down and out. Sometimes um, we are moody. Sometimes we are excited. Sometimes we are anxious. Allah is aware of all of these. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with, you know, tripartite capabilities. Tripartite, triple capacity. We have capacity for weakness, abdaf. Everyone, every human being that Allah has created, He has created him with inherent weaknesses. So no one is powerful, absolutely. Everyone has one weakness or the other. That is the nature of uh, human beings. That is the nature that Allah has given to us. That is the nature that He has created us with. So He has created us with a bath which are inherent human weaknesses. And not. All right. What is a nux? We're not complete. We have our shortcomings. This is what a nux is. Nobody can be absolutely perfect. No human being is an efficiency machine. All right. So, um, as fine as we are. We have our downside, all right? You cannot be so fine that you don't, you don't go to the toilet. Have you seen a man who is so fine that he doesn't go to the loo? No, it's impossible. That's part of the weakness. As strong as you are, you will want will at a time during the day or the night you sleep. Have you seen a fine man, strong man that doesn't go to sleep? It's impossible. You will eat and feel hunger. Have you seen a man that, does, that, that, that doesn't eat? Or a woman, is so, she's so beautiful that she doesn't eat. No, it's impossible. And have you seen a person that will not feel hunger? You will feel hunger, you will be satiated. You will feel thirsty, you will be, you know, uh, uh, satiated too. So, and uh, the third witness, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with is that you are sometimes right and you are sometimes wrong. More often than not, you are right. Um, but it, it is a balance. When anybody that is capable of being right is also capable of being wrong. So these are the three inherent weaknesses that Allah has created us with. We have in our nature weaknesses. And that you cannot be so strong that you don't fall sick. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. Huh? So, and that as um, beautiful as we are, sometimes we're very happy and sometimes we break down. We, we become very, very emotional. Have you seen a man who never cries? No, even the rich also cries. You know that. Have you seen a man that is always happy? Even the happiest set of human beings on the stories of the earth are often one once in a while in their life, they are also moody, they are also sad. Things will not even go the way they want it to. So it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has created us with these minuses because perfection belongs to him alone. We are all relative in our abilities and disabilities. It is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is absolute in power, absolute in knowledge, absolute in grace, absolutely absolute all of us human beings are relative you are only relatively real 
you are only relatively great. You are only relatively strong. You are only relatively happy. In fact, this moment you can be happy and the next moment you can be so anxious and sad that you will not even remember. Uh, you will not recall how it feels to be happy. So this Allah that I bring glad tidings to you from him is um, aware of the nature that he has given to you. He's aware that you are human. He's aware that you are not the way you look, even as you're sitting. You are not exactly the way you look. Yes, that you are different, that you have secrets, that you have inner weaknesses, that you have anxieties, that you have worries in spite of the way you look unruffled. Allah knows that. Allah is aware. He is Sabirun Bima Ya'malun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well informed of the things you do, um, you know, in the form of the night. The things you do when you are alone. The things you do when people are not watching you. The things you do when you are in seclusion. He knows everything. He sees everything. He's aware of everything. In spite of the fact that he's aware of your weaknesses, check him out. Check his word out in the Quran. Uh, check the Quran, chapter 39, verse 53. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash shaytan rajeem Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Qul ya ibadillahi asrafu ala anfusihim ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillah inna allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a he says, O oh my servant, who had been unjust to himself, don't give up hope of the mercy of Allah. Are you such a sinner? that you have written yourself off? No. Allah says, no. In spite of your sin, no matter what the sin is, what is your sin? What is the greatest sin that you have committed? In, the in your own estimation, how big is your sin? Allah is bigger than your sin. His mercy is bigger than those sins. His grace outweighs whatever it is your shortcomings are. Don't give up. Don't give up hope. Don't despair of the mercy of Allah. Inna Allah ya ufiru dhunuba jami'a. Allah forgives all sins. Oh, inna Allah ya ufiru dhunuba jami'a. Allah forgives all sins. How many sins? What kind of sin, what nature of sin have you committed? You don't pray. Eh? You are a professional adulterer. You are an adulteress. Hmm? Name it. You drink. You gamble. You steal. You have killed people. You are stealing. What is it? What is your sin? No matter what your sin is, never say, ah, no, my sin is too much and Allah cannot forgive me. Are you a Muslim during the day and something else at night? All right? 
Are you a Muslim only in the month of Ramadan? Are you so bad and vicious that you think Allah cannot redeem you? Do you think your case is irredeemable? What is it that you have done? Because you want fame? Because you want to be a star? Because you want to be popular, because you want to be loved, because you want power, you have done things that are unspoken. And you think your case is beyond redemption. No. La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Don't despair of Allah's mercy. He can forgive you if today you turn to him in sincere repentance your case is not hopeless your file is not closed no what is it name it your case is not beyond redemption there is no sin Allah cannot forgive provided you turn to him in sincere repentance. If you will only repent sincerely, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ready to convert all of the sins that you have ever committed into virtue. You may not understand this, but let me break it down for you. You have become insolvent. Let me say it, you have become bankrupt. You declare bankruptcy because your the, the level of your debt is so high that there is no way you can pay back. Even if they sell you, huh? If they take you to the market and sell you, um, the price will not be able to repay the debt that you owe. Is it? You have taken bank loan. You have taken personal loan. You have uh, mortgaged your properties. You have... What is it? You are so neck deep in debt that your, your situation appears, as far as you are concerned, to be hopeless. Is it? Now, the black tidings that I bring to you is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, if you come and you turn in sincere repentance, and I will presently tell you what repentance, what sincere repentance is all about. But let me tell you what Allah will do. He said, for those who sincerely repent, Ula'ika yubaddilullahu sayji'atihin hasanat. Those people, Allah will convert all their evil deeds into good deeds. Imagine a situation when you, where you have a loan. And let me just give an example. You have taken a loan of $250 million from a bank. And you, 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 you sank it into a project and the project failed. We are seeing examples. The most recent, very tragic, and um, uh, 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 very, very hard touching is uh, the high-rise luxury flat uh, in Ikoi that collapsed. You know how much loan, you know how much investment has gone into it. For those who, uh, you know, lost their lives, uh, may their souls find rest. Now, let us imagine that you are that investor. 
and everything before your eyes just went down the drain. All hopes were dashed. No government can, 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 can do bailout for such a person. No, no bailout. But that is where a lie is different. Now imagine you take a situation like this before Allah. Allah will convert all of the loans into deposit for you. That account that is in red, all right? Red will turn to green. And green is the sign, the green light is the sign of um, permission. You can go. You are now good to go. Your credit rating, rating has not been enhanced. Your life, the way you run it, is such that so many people have become bankrupt as a result of sin. If today they sit and reflect and go back to Allah, remorseful, penitent, sincerely, Allah will forgive them and it is like one, it, Allah is giving them net forgiveness. When it's okay now, you are, you are now good. You are no longer a debtor. You are free from debt. You are forgiving your debt. You know a human being can do that. No, it is very rare. But only Allah can do the next thing that I'm going to tell you now. What is the next thing? Allah will now, all right? Having forgiven your debts, Allah will now credit your account to the tune of the debt that you owe. I don't, I, I, I'm, I, I don't know whether there are business people here, uh, whether there are investors here, will understand the language that I'm speaking. Having been neck deep in debt, the first thing you enjoy is debt forgiveness, total debt forgiveness. Not unilat unilateral reconciliation of debt. No, but total debt forgiveness. That's one. Two, now you are now credited with the same amount of which you are indebted. No more debt to service, no more debt to repay. But now you are three times richer than you used to be and without a debt. How would you like that? Allah can even give you better than that. Allah can give you better than that. Are you an artist? Or an artist? What is it that you do? You smoke Igbo? You drink Ogogoro? You even smoke bush? You sniff powder? You booze? All right? You have painted the whole country red. Oh, how how bad will it be? How 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 much worse will it be? And today, just today, this Ramadan, you take advantage of this moment and you sincerely repent to Allah. Allah will not only forgive all the ego that you have you have smoked, all the cocaine and all the snivables that you have sniffed. All the green and, 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 and brown bottles that you have taken and bottles that I don't know their color. All of the kind of drinks that you have taken, it doesn't matter. Allah will redeem you. Allah will accept you. Allah will clean out, blot out all of these from your account and you will be like new, like the day you were born, sinless, 
pure, immaculate. That is what it meant. That's what Allah is trying to tell you in Quran chapter 39, verse 53. Inna Allah yaqfiru dhunuba jami'a Allah forgives all sins Inna wu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim is um, oft returning of mercy He is all forgiving Again in Quran chapter 12 verse 53 so that uh, you will know you will be reassured that Allah Taala is aware of who you are because He created you. Uh, see, it is Sayyidina Yusuf, alayhi salatu was salam. He he faced temptation just like you and I face every day. You remember Yusuf in the Quran. He faced temptation. Um, you know, he almost he almost got into treachery with another man's wife. Um, he almost got into an amorous relationship, illicitly for that matter. But then Yusuf said, "Laula an raha fa 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 bihi wa hamma biha." You know, um, Yusuf was as attracted uh, at a point, just like the woman was also attracted to him. He was also attracted to her, but. For the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intervened and saved him from falling into temptation. So inherently, we are created with temptations, ability to fall into temptation. And that is why in Quran chapter 12, verse 53, Yusuf is saying, I do not absolve myself of error. I have not absolved myself of all errors. Inna The soul, the human soul, the human mind is wont to command evil. Everyone will be tempted. If they are sufficiently exposed, all right. If you are alone and you are not aware that there, there are cameras watching you, or there are eyes watching you, you could do things and you have done, and you are still doing things in privacy. Um, you know, of your of your room, in the in your comfort zone, in your in your in your safe havens, safe havens, you do things that you don't want people to see you doing. Yes, this is human. I'm not saying it is right. I'm not saying it is justified. I'm not saying I am saying that the, the, the tendency is for human beings to do this. Um, only Allah knows what some people do in private, even in the month of Ramadan. Say, people were all fasting, Abi. May Allah accept our fasting. But it is only Allah who knows those of us that are fasting. After all, nobody can monitor us. It is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our own conscience that are our monitors. So, I want us to understand that we are not angels. Allah, if he had willed, he would have created us as angels. Angels are incapable of sin. They don't have capacity to sin. Just like angels do not eat, angels do not drink, angels do not sleep, angels are 
are special beings. لا يأكلون ولا يشربون ولا ينامون ولا يعصون الله ما أمرهم وهم عباد مكرمون. They don't eat, they don't drink. All right. They do not sleep. They don't have the capacity to disobey Allah that you and I have. And that's why we are different from the angels. We have the capacity to disobey because we've been granted free will. But of the mercy of Allah is that in fact he is ready to forgive us in a hadith uh, that I will uh, 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 later talk about Allah has said if you will not commit sin at all you will be sinless then I will not be happy with you is it a, is it a tacit encouragement to commit sin? no no He said, I will, I, will, I will wipe you off the surface of the earth. Instead of you, I will create another set of beings who will sin and repent. Who will sin out of error inadvertently. All right? Not with impunity. Who will act out their true nature? They are being human. They are being fallible. And then they will realize that they have they, they, they have sinned. And they will return to me in repentance. And I will be happy with them and I will forgive them. So it is not about sinning. It is about repenting as soon as you realize that you are committing a sin. Let us have an understanding of this sin, 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 sin that we are talking about. What is the origin? Why do we sin as human beings? Is it possible for us to be sinless? No. It's not possible. We can't be sinless. We will commit sin. And Allah is not expecting us to be sinless. What Allah expects from us is to do our best to go away from major sins. What are major sins? What are minor sins? Eh? There are major sins, really. And I, I will go back to it uh, shortly. All right? But you see, let's go back to the beginning. When Allah decided to create Adam, Our progenitor, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. When Allah decided to, 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 create, to create him, he informed his assembly. Allah also has an assembly, honorable one, the assembly of angels, that he intends to create on earth because the earth in which we live now was there. It was a beautiful place. It was unoccupied. Very beautiful. Everything was laid out. Everything was lush and green. Everything was cool and calm. Everything was harmonious. The air was salubrious. The water was portable. 
the breeze was good. There was no pollution. Every noise was a symphony. It was in harmony. Everything worked. Everything was beautiful. Everything worked together. Have you been in a natural, natural garden where there is a brook, you know, um, a stream flowing, where birds are humming and singing, where the breeze is blowing gently, where there are low-hanging fruits, where the flora and fauna are in harmony. Everything is working together. Have you ever been in a place like this? Maybe some of us have never been so lucky to be in a place where nature exudes its beauty. The sun is not so hot. It is not too cold. The breeze is blowing gently. You see birds humming and singing. You see, you feel safe. You are one with nature. Sometimes, because you live in the city, they say you need a holiday. You have to go and be in nature. I have a small farm. Once in a while, when I go to the farm, I understand peace. I experience calmness. You see, I feel relaxed. You know, I, 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 I feel well rested. You ever um, slept under the tree? Not in a city where there is noise and pollution, but in a place that the pollution is Minimal. Have you ever been? Have you ever been in a place like this? Have you ever been in a, place, in a place like this? I'm sure not many of us have been in a place like that. So the world was, uh, you know, so attractive. A place that everyone wants to be. And then Allah knows, I want to create people who will live here and inherit this. That is the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us in Quran chapter 38 verse 71. Uh, you can read it. It's about uh, 11 or so verses. Um, I would have read it, but I, I, we don't have uh, that time. But let me just give you the message. Let me give you the message. Or, for those of you who have a copy of the Quran, or you have your phone, you can just uh, open to to that um, to that place in the Quran, you know, 3871, it says, Rahmanurrahim. <speaking in Hebrew> فسجد الملائكة كلهم أجمعون إلا إبليس استكبر وكان من الكافرين قال يا إبليس ما منعك أن تسجد لما خلقت بيدي استكبرت أم كنت من العليل قال أنا خير منه خلقتني من نار وخلقته من تين قال فاخرج منها فإنك رجيم وأن عليك لعنتي إلى يوم الدين قال ربي فأنذرني إلى يوم يبعثون قال فإن المنذرين إلى يوم الوقت المعلوم قال 
So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this uh, 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 place in the Quran, I said it is chapter 38 from verse 71. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, um, remember when Allah, your Lord, you know, said to the angels, truly I'm going to create man from clay. I am going to create man from clay. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling the angels. And, uh, you know, uh, when, so when our fashion, when Allah has created us, that's you and I, you and I, when Allah has created us, has fashioned us, all right, he said to the angels, all right, he said to the angel, pay obeisance, that is Adam. Bow before Adam as a recognition of the fact that he is superior to you. By dint of what? By dint of the gifts that Allah will give to him. What are these gifts? Number one, the gift of knowledge. The gift of knowledge, that's why human beings are superior to the angels. Allah has created us and given us comprehensive knowledge. The ability to learn. The ability to establish a relationship. Alright? This relates to these. To know the names and attributes of everything. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And of course, you know, whoever has knowledge rules the world, right or wrong? Knowledge is power. It is not how muscular you are, all right? It is not um, for how many years you have been in bodybuilding. No, that is not a power. Nowadays, you know, warfare because of knowledge negative knowledge i would say has changed you don't need to go to any front you can be in the comfort of your offices or rooms and send missiles all right drones or manned planes by the touch of your body you can level a whole city Whoever has this kind of knowledge is the most powerful. Power is not about, you know, uh, how you can wrestle. It is about knowledge. This world has been given to us as human beings. It is our universal heritage. Knowledge is our universal heritage. And it is because of that that Allah has asked the angels recognize the importance and the superiority of knowledge and they all bow before Adam all of the angels bowed before Adam recognizing the superiority of Adam and you know uh, recognizing the might and power of Allah who distributes the way he wills even in the life of this world, some people have money, some people have knowledge, some people have uh, uh, power, some people have other things. Some people have physical power. But we can't build houses without them. Unless we want to use machines. And even these machines are limited. Some people must have to operate them. We don't know how to operate these machines. So at the end of the day, it is those who have knowledge that will still be the most powerful. All of the angels bowed before Adam except Iblis. 
Iblis was the only one who did not bow. He didn't recognize. You know what he said? He said, no, but you, you, you know, um, when Allah asked him, what reason have you not to recognize the, the one that I've created with my own hand? Allah asked him, Astagbarta, are you arrogant? Are you proud? Are you insolent? Am kunta min al Or you see yourself as superior, higher than Adam. I created you, I created Adam. And I'm the one who creates and, and distributes and gives. So, you know what Iblis said? He said, yes sir, ana khairun min. I'm better than this one. I am better than this one because you created them, you created me from fire and you created Adam from dust. Fire and dust, which one is superior? I'm superior now. I can't bow before this. It's just like, um, you know, you have been on the job for 15 years. And um, they brought a 25-year-old graduate of Harvard, you know, who has not only gone to school, but has also had experience. And they made him a boss over you. They say you should henceforth be reporting to him. And he said, over my dead body. This is not even as old as my, my second child. He's not even as old as my third child. Ah, no, I, I cannot. How can I call him Oga? No, it's not possible. I can't call him Oga. Of course. Otherwise, you are going to suffer. You will feel hunger. You will feel thirst. You will feel naked. Let him sit beside his wife. No, no, sit down, sit down, sit down. Let him sit beside his wife and you can change position. Please, Bismillah, 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 Bismillah. Hmm? I'm sure you don't want to separate. Okay. So, now, brother and sister, go and read this this uh, this passage in the Quran, uh, and it's important that you read and understand. Now, why am I reading it? I'm reading it so that you will know the genesis of the enmity between us and Iblis. That enmity has foundation, and this is the foundation. This is the genesis of that enmity, that hatred. Iblis believes that he is superior to Adam. He believes that he is cheated, that he was cheated. That he is the one who deserved what was given to Adam. And he vowed, is it because of this one? that you have rejected me ah, okay for all my labor I want to ask grant me respite until the end of time Allah said we have granted you respite he asks for until end of time, Allah says, until such a time, all right, and an hour that is known to us, but is unknown to you. After saying that, after Allah telling him that, he now said, eh, Fabima Abuaitani, because of what you have done to me, ah, then I will have vowed, I have vowed enmity. I will waylay the children of Adam. I will, I will, I will waylay them. 
they will find me in front. They will find me behind. They will find me to their right. They will find me to their, to their left. They will find me everywhere. I will create doubts in their hearts. And you will not find most of them expressing gratitude to you. Allah assured, yes, you can say that, but you will not have power over those of them who chose to believe in me sincerely. You will not have power over them. It is those who follow you that you will be able to control. You will not be able to control those who believe in me, those who are with me, those who trust me absolutely, those who give sincere worship to me. You will not connect with them because they are already connected to me. You know there are connections and there are connections. There is 3G, is it? And there is 4G. Okay? There is 5G and many other Gs that are coming. But well, you can compare them now. 5G is just on a different level, a different kind of experience. And I believe we are just beginning. Because the, hum the vista that human knowledge has opened is such that it is seemingly limitless, even though Allah has told us that the knowledge he has given us is limited. But what we can do with the knowledge that Allah has given us appears limitless. So, if you wonder, why do we sin? This is the genesis. You can, you can also ask me, okay, then what is our fault? If this is the situation, then what is our fault? Yes, your fault is that you can choose not to sin. You can ignore the whisperings of shaitan. Because shaitan, have you ever seen him? Anyone that ever seen shaitan here? Please raise up your hand. Have you ever seen shaitan? And when, it, when anything happens there, you know it's shaitan. Now, how does shaitan have, uh, you know, work? It works by whispering into your heart. Eh? Are you foolish? Uh, uh, do you want to take this? You, you, can, you, you can take it. You, you, go and go, go for it, dear job. Uh, uh, are you a fool? And afterwards, after Shaitan has goaded you, has pushed you, and you have done what you are not supposed to do, but you don't have capacity to do, then Shaitan will disappear and say, no, no, I have no hand in it too. I'll give you a typical example. You know, someone was driving a car, and he was stopped at a uh, stop and search. And they ask him, come out. You know, uh, in Nigeria, it's an offense for you to be stopped and you sit in the car. That would enrage the policeman. In the US, you want to die. You want to die. If they stop you and you stop and you open your car door, that's death. You well, can be killed. So, but because he's a Nigerian Gragra now, as soon as he was stopped, he parked and he just said, hey, hey, what is it? Why are you stopping me? Yeah, what nonsense? I don't have my, I know my right. At the end of the day, you know Nigerian police men, they say even if you just take um, 
a car from the factory, they can count up to 17 traffic offenses for you. Nigerian police will do it. He thought he could just, uh, at the end of the day, he started speaking English. And you know the, the worst thing when you are confronted with Nigerian police for you to speak English, speak pidgin. They will flow with you. But God help you. Say, hey, Mr. Man, what was the problem? Don't, don't you know that you are just talking? Hey, say, hey, okay, welcome. You just come from America, B. Nah. Okay, uh, where your uh, roadworthiness? No one road what I, I don't have it. Eh? Okay, uh, uh, maybe we see the transit number. The receipt for this motor call. Now you get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, we we receipt for it. Custom paper and call clearance. You clear them. I mean, uh, you smoke. So what are you saying? What are you insulting me? Yeah, okay. I said, make you bring paper. And I said, you clear me. I be in a smoke with smoke gum. Eh? You said you be in Nigeria. Every question they ask, they are incriminating him. At the end of the day, he thought it was a joke. After about three hours, he said, hey, "Okay, we will talk now." Yeah, no, me, I don't talk. You know, Lord, make you go call lawyer now. After five hours, they took him to the station. You see, I, I beg you, I, I take God beg you. Okay, I take, hey, hey, see, I, you hear, I take God beg you. This I take God beg you. That time she thought will have gone away. Gra gra. Will have, you know, vaporized. Will have vanished. Shaitan works like that. He goats you to go and do things. And at the end of the day, regret will set in. And you feel so small. All the English, the grammar will disappear. And there will be no one. People that you think will bail you out. You say, um, Oga, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, Policemen, uh, they, are, they are stopping there, just harassing me, making life unbearable for me. Okay, give them, give them, give them, give them my the phone. Let me talk to them. Say, Oga, oh they want to talk to you. Say, now who? Who they be? Who they be? Now, IG of police, they could tell up say, I don't talk to them. Anybody will be above law in this country, make it, make it come show me. It is there you will know you are in real trouble. And that's how Shaitan works, brothers and sisters in that land. Day. The Prophet said, When Lady Nafsi Biedi, Lau Lam Tazibu, Ladahabalahu Bikum, Walaja Abikomin Yazliboon, Fayastak Firun Allah, Fagafar Allahum. The Prophet said, by he in whose hand is my soul, if you, human beings, do not see. And I'm particularly telling you, those of you who are in the entertainment industry, I know it is very tough. Some of you are going further afield because you think you have committed so much sin and your case is irredeemable. Listen to the prophet. I told you I, I have brought you glad tidings and I've brought you a message of hope. That your case is not too bad. That your case is not irredeemable. And now is the time for you to take stock of your life and uh, repent sincerely to Allah. You could even be better than angels. Your turnaround could just be now. If you are willing to give Kaoba a trial. Are you afraid of poverty? Yes. Ah, what will I eat? What will I... Do you know you can drop dead? 
May Allah have mercy on San Sultan. No one will see him weeks before he died and will say anything was wrong with him. He was not thinking of death. No. Just like you are full of life now. You don't know what comorbidities you are walking, you know, around with. You don't know. And it could be possible that you are just walking around with many comorbidities. Not just one. And you are feeling healthy. You are forming fine boy. Will you not take advantage of the fact that now you have the ability to repent? Will you wait until it is too late? Are you going to wait until you have run a failure before you say, ah, oh Allah, I repent, I will not take alcohol again. When your kidneys have failed. When diabetes and hypertension have robbed you of your mouth, you say, oh, I will not fornicate again. Go ahead. Hypertension, diabetes. They have taken manhood out of you. You just look like a man. You are worse than a woman. And this is now you say, oh Allah, I know they do again. Do. Sister, now you are forming fine girl. I beg, pancake, you know me fine girl, no. <laughs> I like pancake, you know me fine girl. Make you cool. Talk to yourself. You know a time will come when that face will reject pancake. It's not going to blend. It's not going to fit again. It will just stand apart from you. The only thing they will be seeing is pancake. You will be in the background. There will no more be goods in the warehouse, talk less of the shell. The one in the warehouse will have finished. The one on, this, on the shelves, all will have been exhausted. There will be nothing to sell again. And people will not have anything to buy. Before that time comes, repent, my brother. Repent, my sister. And it doesn't cost you anything. People have done it before. Big names. I've done it before. Whether in sports or in, in, or in entertainment. You remember Abdul Karim Abdul Jabbar of the NBA fame? one of the most valuable players in the history of basketball in the United States. If you can remember him, you remember our own Hakim Olajuwon. Now he no longer, he cannot play basketball again. But he made his mark. Do you know that uh, Akim Olajuwon speak, speaks better Arabic than most Alphas today. Even Mike Tyson. These are people that you can relate with and others. Whatever it is that you do for Allah, what Allah will try, will test, is just the sincerity. But be sure that he will not abandon you. All right? Kulubna Adam Khatta wa khayru al-khatta'in tawabun. 
all of the children of Adam are prone to commit errors, to make mistakes. No Afa is an angel. No one is fallible. We all commit sin. The difference, however, is that there are people, whenever they commit sins inadvertently, they are quick to recognize it as sin and they are quick to repent and ask Allah for forgiveness. You yourself, you, you should not continue your lifestyle like this. One leg in, one leg out. Don't continue to say, no, that's my profession. It is different from me. <laughs> say, no, um, I, I need to do that. You know, it, it's just for my fans. Your fans will not be there when you stand alone with Allah. They will not be there. There are no permanent stars. You know, there are no... Now, can you see any star? No, you can only see stars at night. And it's not even every night. So, if you are a star, it's only for a moment. There were stars of yesteryears. They would deceive some people who call them evergreen. All right? You are only... In, in fact, they will tell you the truth. They will say you are a rave of the moment. Abi, rave of the moment. And after some years, you will become what? Old school. So it is because of this, this moment, momentary fame, that you want to give your whole life, entire life out. You want to dash it to shaitan. No, please. Please. What should you do in closing? Number one. If you are a Muslim, learn about Islam. Start learning today. Don't deceive yourself. I can read Quran. I finish the Quran. You don't know anything. You know nothing. Humble yourself. Learn the Quran. Understand what Allah is asking you to do and not to do. Let Allah talk to you. When you read the Quran, you want to enter into conversation with Allah. It's not that you just say, Allah, 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 Read the Quran and enter into conversation with Allah. Even if you don't know the meaning of communion, at least listen to him speak to you. I'm sure if you try it, you will like it. You will not, your life will not be the same again. Please do it. Next, ask yourself, for how much longer could you live? I don't know, I'm not, I'm not, um, I fact checked it. But I saw something on Facebook um, some weeks back. There was a woman, I think an Asian woman, she was said to be 399 years old. Many of you would have seen, uh, you know, that post on Facebook and so on and so forth. Well, do you want to be like that, really? Well, I ask you. You want 399 years? And you want to be like that woman, really, for sure, for real? I'm sure if you are here for 399 years, you will be out of touch with reality. Because nobody will be able to relate with your experience. They will not understand what you are saying. 
you will not understand what they are saying either. So what is the longest you want to live? 120? 150 years? You want to live forever? What is even forever? What does forever mean? If you are 80, you will know it's tough to be old. Some of you are already knowing that it is very tough to be old, to grow old. Whether you are a man or, a, or you are a woman. In our younger days, we could travel on the shortest possible notice. I remember in our own days, I don't know, this is a digital aid. We used to do something like this. Uh, a cardboard we cut, I would say, to the mosque, uh, to the school, to the... That is the only thing people, when they go to visitors, will see. Ah, no, he has gone to school. Ah, he has gone to... Nobody. And from the school, we can travel out of town. No, in fact, no schedule. Eh? We don't need long notice to travel. Growing up has taught us that we can't even go from office elsewhere. We have to tell some people, hey, I'm leaving office now. Even if you are not responsible, what of kidnapping? Are you not afraid? <laughs> Look, if you take Uber, eh, they say share your, share your journey because of uh, fear of being kidnapped or in order to be able to trace. You don't want to just hail a taxi now. These days, it's no longer safe. So how old do you really want to be? How old do you really want to grow? If you want rest, peace in your old age, then invest your energy now so that you reap rest. And the best way is to recognize your creator, worship him sincerely. And don't be deceived by fame, by wealth, by plaudits, by accolades. They will all vizzle away. They will all become meaningless. Don't you stand before the mirror once in a while? If it were possible, do you not, for those of you who have albums, don't you check check out your 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 photos as a ten year old? How were you looking? You are looking very sweet. Huh? At fifteen, oh, you are looking angelic. If you are a, if you are a lady, at sixteen, you are sweet and angelic too. You are cherubic. At twenty six, how are you looking? At 30, after two kids, after three kids, at 40, how are you looking? At 50, how are you looking? All right? What of the frames? That, that, that frame that uh, is award winning when you were 26, today it has become a ghost of itself. You have added tire all around. <laughs> and this is the reality of the world. I remember in my younger days, I had very sharp eyes. I never needed uh, glasses. I just got glasses in less than 10 years now. And um, I miss my eyes, even though it is still there. I'm sure you have similar stories to tell. Some of you are already missing your leg. It is still there. Some of you are already missing your back. I miss my back. You had no, you never had an accident, but you are already missing your back. You understand what I'm telling you? You know it better than I do now, all right? 
Some of you, you are already missing your sheep. You are only struggling, struggling, struggling. Otherwise, you will just be like an amoeba. I'm sorry, I don't mean any insults. I'm just asking you to know that this is fleeting. Whatever it is that you pride is fleeting. What will endure is your relationship with Allah. What is worth sacrificing your youth, your life for is the happiness of tomorrow, is the joy of tomorrow, is the enjoyment of tomorrow. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive Sam Sultan. The last time we were here, he was here. Even when COVID will not allow us, he was in my house. We were online. He coordinated it. He is no more. It is what he left that we are remembering today. And we pray that Allah will add all of his good deeds, especially the one that he left behind, you know, to the scale of his good deeds. May Allah accept some of the good things that he had done at Sarakatul Jariah for him. May Allah forgive his shortcomings, for he was a human being. He did well. He fell short. He committed, he made errors. He committed sins. But you are Allah, the all forgiving, the all merciful. Please forgive him. Allahumma kfirlahu wa rahamhu wa afihi wa afu anhu wa akrim nuzulahu wa wasi iman khalahu wa aksilhu allahumma bil ma'i wa thalj wa albarad wa naqihi min al-dhunub wa al-khataya kama yunaqa thawb al-abiyadu min al-danas allahumma ba'id baynahu wa bayna khatayahu kama ba'atta bayna al-mashrik wa al-maghrib Amin ya Rabb al-alamin Let me say that um, this is not an anniversary of his death no it is not it is not it is not an anniversary of his death it is just something that is put together uh, so that he could share in the reward of the good deeds because indeed he took very active part in the previous ones that were organized the question I want to leave you with, what would you want to be remembered for? Who do you want to remember you after death? In the clubhouse where they are drinking alcohol? Among beautiful babes who will miss you? And tell Allah that uh, you indeed used to be very reckless and they are missing you, reckless with everything. The choice is yours. May you choose right. I'm praying for you. May you choose right. May we choose right. May we be righteous. May Allah bless us. May Allah accept our ibadah. May we witness more months of Ramadan in our lives in good health and strong iman. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون السلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين